Pipelines? Funnels? Am I in the right place? This, this sounds like a fixed ops course. Are we going to talk about changing engine oil? Oh, let me assure you, I could teach a course on changing oil and tires and brake pads. I was 15 years old when I started at my first dealership and those things were all in my job description. At least I think they were. Come on, that was over 20 years ago. <laughs> way over 20 years ago. But today we're talking sales. You may have heard of sales pipelines and purchase funnels before, but what do they mean to you and your future success in auto sales? Well, stick around. That's coming up next on The 5 Minute Coach. I'm John Quaddy, the 5-Minute Coach. Understanding how prospects flow through their buying journey and how that relates to your sales opportunities will improve the quality of your forecasting, your data, and your activities. If instead you spend the majority of your time just waiting for the next shopper to email you or walk in the door, you're going to be disappointed. Let's get familiar with the funnel slash pipeline and how each level is populated. First, the overall shape indicates the number of prospects you would typically have at each level. So since awareness and familiarity are the widest blocks, even without quantifying the actual numbers, you'd assume that you would have the largest number of customers or prospects in those two categories. Looking at the vertical arrangement of the categories, you would also assume that as shoppers progress through their buying journey, they get closer and closer to a purchase decision and ultimately a loyal relationship with you, your dealership, and your products. Because you never really know how quickly people will move through the funnel though, you need to continuously follow up with them to position yourself appropriately. Also, as prospects descend in the funnel, their numbers shrink. So someone who is only beginning to consider vehicles might populate the awareness category along with a hundred other potential buyers. As they get more serious about your products, researching and eventually even test driving vehicles, they would move to the familiarity and consideration phases. But the numbers in each category shrink because those prospects either, le either leave the market or they shop for vehicles somewhere else. Finally, it's worth noting that there's even a drop off in number between purchase and loyalty. People who buy from you are not automatically loyal. And even though it's not a category, there's a big difference between satisfied and loyal too. As I often say, it doesn't matter how satisfied a client is if she buys her next vehicle somewhere else. Okay, now let's talk about how we can populate our funnel or pipeline with prospects. I know what you're thinking, wouldn't it be great to be able to reverse the size of the categories so purchase and loyalty would be the biggest segments? Well, yeah, but how easy is it to find people who are ready to buy something immediately upon contacting you? Oh, you'll get lucky sometimes and find customers who have already done all their shopping and driving and pricing, but they are few and far between. And if you do get them, it's because they found you. You didn't find them. So let's focus on what we can control instead of what we can't. When it comes to adding people to your pipeline, plan on starting them in the awareness or familiarity stages and then work to guide them through their journey. One of the first new cars I ever sold was a beautiful Cadillac Eldorado. It was the Baritz model with a stainless steel half roof. It would look a little dated these days, but it was a sweet ride back in the 80s. The guy who bought it from me was one of my brother's co-workers and we got along really well from the start. Well, a few weeks after he picked up the Eldorado, he walked into the showroom with his daughter looking for a pre-owned car for her. Where do you think they started in the funnel? Well, certainly not in the awareness phase, even though they had no idea what she wanted to buy. They were easily in the consideration category and 
considering she drove home in a cute blue two-door that day, they absolutely hit the purchase and loyalty blocks too. The point is, different people move through the funnel at different paces. In the end, it doesn't matter how we label people in the funnel because their journeys are fluid. Just include as many prospects as you can in your funnel slash pipeline so the purchase and loyalty blocks get plenty of attention every month. Okay, let's look at our KLPs or key learning points for today's course. Number one, the blocks at the top of the purchase funnel account for the greatest number of prospects. Number two, follow up and be in the right place at the right time in order to make the most of your sales opportunities. Number three, 100 prospects in the awareness category may only eventually result in five to 10 sales. So fill your pipeline accordingly. Number four, loyal clients should be your goal. Satisfaction is great, but it doesn't beat loyalty. And that's it for this segment of the 5-Minute Coach. I'm John Quaddy. See you next time.